John was sitting at the kitchen table, reading the newspaper and sipping his coffee when something just over the top of his paper caught his eye and he lowered the paper. And to his amazement, in his flower bed was a unicorn. And he watched for a moment. He goes, Mary's not going to believe this. Very like, quietly went down the hall where Mary was in bed sleeping. Mary, Mary, wake up. Mary, you're not going to believe this. There's a unicorn out in our garden. Mary took the pillow, stuffed it over her face, said, John, everybody knows there's no such thing as unicorns. Leave me alone. You're driving me nuts. Well, he just backed out of the room and walked outside. There was a unicorn in his garden. It was eating his roses, his award-winning roses, but he didn't care. It was a unicorn. And then he walked up to the unicorn. And seeing that there were normal roses, he plucked some lilies and hand-fed the unicorn. And he was admiring the beautiful white coat, but it shimmered like all the colors. And when the wind blew its mane, it rippled all of the different colors. And he reached out and was brave enough to touch the unicorn and it felt silky. He was so happy. The unicorn knelt his head and pierced his chest with his thumb. And in doing so, John could see things for what they really were. It was like he could see the water going up and down, the flowers and the trees. He could hear the grass growing. He could see the wind and feel the sunshine and the clouds were moving. He was filled with such joy. He had to tell Mary. So he ran back to Mary, 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 pulling off the pillow to see the snakes snarling and wiggling from her head. And she said, John, that's it. You are insane. I'm going to call the doctor and have you admitted. And she flipped back the curtains and it was please. He didn't know what to say as he backed out of the room and he just went outside. But the unicorn was gone. Had it been a dream? Did he just imagine it? And he went over to his garden? No. The roses were all gone. There were pieces of lilies left and he looked and in the dirt, he could see the delicate hooves of the unicorn. He looked and he could see the scar on his chest. He hadn't imagined it. He wasn't dreaming. He had seen a unicorn. And he sat underneath the tree, thinking of all that had happened to him. The sun was shining on his face. Soft wind was blowing. He fell asleep. Now, in the meantime, Mary had gotten out of bed, thrown on some clothes, and called the doctor and said, Doctor, I've had it. John keeps talking about unicorns. Everybody knows there's no unicorns. He needs to be admitted for his safety. And you bet he's a big guy. You better bring help. So pretty soon, the doctor, and he'd brought a police officer with him, showed up. And they were talking to Mary, and Mary was saying, Oh, I fear for my safety. He's always talking about these crazy ideas and everybody knows there's no unicorn. Well, in the meantime, John had woken up and he'd come into the house kind of yawning and stretching and he saw the doctor and it's like, well, hi, you know, what are you doing? And so she said, doctor, you know, do what you've got to do. And he's been talking about unicorns. Mary, Mary. There's no such thing as unicorns. Everybody knows there's no such thing as unicorns. And he kind of shrugged at the doctor. The doctor looked at the police officer. Police officer looked at the doctor and they jumped Mary, put on that 
straight jacket and she's yelling obscenities. You fool, it's not me, it's John. He's the one that thinks there's unicorns. And as they took her away, John said, Mary, it's for the best. I'll visit you later. Thank you, doctor. It needed to be done. That is called The Unicorn by James Thurber. He and some friends got together and said, we should write a modern day fairy tale. And that was his entry.